Finnovate showcases cutting-edge banking and financial technology through a global conference series featuring short-form demos and thought leadership. Now, the conversation continues on the Finnovate podcast. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Finnovate podcast. We've got a fun one for you today. We are chatting with Jeff Trammell, COO of Merchants and Marine Bank, and we're going to be talking about cannabis banking specifically. Jeff, thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm glad to be here with you today to learn a little bit and also uh, maybe share a little bit too. Yeah, absolutely. I think you've got some great experience for our listeners to take in. Before we get too far, let's start with just a quick introduction of yourself and a little bit of background on Merchants and Marine Bank. Sure. I, I have like 35 plus years in banking and financial services. I've done everything from frontline, retail operations, credit sales, training, team building, risk management. Uh, I like to think I've been from A to almost Z, from bank teller to C-suite. Um, on the banking side, I've done uh, including regulatory side for seven years as a bank regulator. Um, it's, a, it's a great career. I work with really, really great people, and that's what keeps me going every day. Uh, yeah, that's Bank, yeah we, we have 100 plus years of servicing our community. We're a CDFI, a community development financial institution. We've been recognized by the U.S. Department of Treasury for that. We, we wear it as a, a badge of honor, and, and we work hard for our communities every day. Um, we have a strong, really strong forward-thinking executive team uh, and board directors that's really behind us 100%. Excellent. So let's talk about it. You know, I think obviously we're going to get into kind of the cannabis banking program that you've been working on. But before we get there, can you give us some background on where M&M Bank was before you decided that cannabis banking was the correct next step for you? Yeah. Well, you know, we have a strong executive team and we have a board that's behind us and it gives us the, you know, this innovation mindset and the permission to explore all the different opportunities that come into banking. And there's a lot of great new opportunities in the banking space, especially the last 10 to 15 years. We were at a banking conference in February of 22. Uh, you know, in these conferences, we do things a little bit different with our team. Instead of getting, you know, these conferences have a hotels and you go there and then everyone breaks off to their hotel room in silos. We rented a house, a B B, right? And after every conference, we sit around the table or over the pool or whatever and start sharing everything we've learned to kind of recap and, and kind of relive those moments. And at that particular conference in early 2022, everything was either uh, fintech, uh, crypto, or cannabis banking. And the cannabis banking really resonated with us for two reasons. One is that uh, Mississippi just passed the Mississippi Medical Cannabis Act. In January 22, it had overwhelmingly support of the population. It was a popular vote. Every county was over 70%. So we knew that cannabis banking was coming to Mississippi, and we wanted to possibly look at that. Number two is I was able to develop some contacts in the bank, cannabis banking industry. And so putting those two things together, it just made sense for us to look at it. And so that's the direction we went into. Yeah, no, really interesting. And I love the idea of kind of getting a house at a conference. Obviously, you know, those of you coming to Finnovate Fall this year might be a little bit more difficult to pull off in midtown Manhattan. But the the benefits of having your team available to kind of quickly talk through some of these pieces is really interesting. So, you know, as you're looking at this, you see obviously a new opportunity that's sitting out there and the timing of it makes complete sense. But I'm sure you also kind of immediately saw some potential red flags or challenges associated with working in this industry. Obviously, it's still illegal at a federal level. There's a lot of different rules on state-by-state -state basis. What were some of the initial challenges that you guys knew you had to be really conscious of as you move forward? Right. Well, you know, in that conference and with our teams later on, when we got back to, to Pasagula, the first thing, the most obvious was reputation risk. Um, how were our shareholders, how would our board, how would our stakeholders perceive our bank doing cannabis banking? We're in the deep south. There's a lot of connotations with that. We weren't sure how that was going to work out. So that really kind of bothered us for a bit. How to get past that? Was it as big of a deal as we thought it would be? The second thing is, is the legal aspect because it is a gray area. State is legal, federally it's not. How is that going to go with the Bank Secrecy Act and the anti-money laundering regulations? And how would our regulators look at this? Because, you know, 
we're participating in a legal transaction, but then again, it is state legal. Fortunately for us, we're not the first state to ever do cannabis banking. And our federal regulators have been there before, they've seen it before, it wasn't such a big deal. And one of the approaches we did that to kind of overcome that particular step where we presented our program to our state and federal regulators. They couldn't bless it. They couldn't, you know, say this was a great idea. But at least they knew the thought that we put into it. And, and the last thing that really stood out to is how do we, how do we verify every transaction? Because we know most of cannabis sales in the U.S. are illegal. So how do we make sure that that dollar that's been deposited in our bank is a state legal transaction? So we go back to reputation risk, um, regulatory risk, and legal framework, how that works. And the last thing is operational risk. Yeah, no, clearly there's there's no shortage of different potential pitfalls there. But um, as you said, you're not the first ones who've had to kind of try and navigate all of these pieces. So um, let's talk a little bit more about your partnership with Green Check, because obviously they've been really helpful for you in helping you to get the program off the ground. Can you talk a little bit about how that partnership works and, and how exactly you're able to offer the services that you're offering? Yeah, I would. So we came back from the conference. We spent a couple you know, weeks going over the concept of cannabis banking because that's the direction we want to go into. Instead of a top-down approach, we pull people from my different teams, from retail, from compliance, from BSA, uh, from operations. We put them together in a room. We set up a meeting schedule and said, first thing we need to do is find a really good partner to work with. Who's out there helping financial institutions do cannabis banking? And obviously, Green Check was on the list, and there were three or four other programs out there. And for us, Green Check was the best fit for our model and our concept. And from that moment on, it, we think it's been a great partnership. One of the first things that Green Check came out was with the risk assessment framework. Um, in our world, and which is heavily regulated, uh, the U.S. banking industry, if you don't have a risk assessment to give to your examiners, to give to your internal and external auditors, you're going to uh, you're going to have a bad day. So they provided a extensive framework for us to work with, and from that we were able to tailor uh, this risk assessment model and bring in all the different factors to think about. Uh, not only compliance and legal, but to bring in BSA uh, anti money laundering, to bring in our retail, how it's going to impact them, and, and bring in lending if that's one area, and bring everyone together. So not only did we have a comprehensive risk assessment that said this was the best thing to use capital for, not only did it give us a, a I guess a, a validation to our regulators and to our auditors, but it helped get everyone in our bank on the same team. And that was everyone in our bank knew exactly what was coming, who had what role to play in, and that helped us launch very fast. So that was a great first step. Uh, the second step is once we have passed the risk assessment, they provided uh, extensive pricing and marketing assistance as far as uh, giving us some mathematical models and, and some really thought-provoking questions to think about from a marketing standpoint. And the models helped us look at how to price our model, how to price our service to the Mississippi market and to markets beyond, and look at it not only from one angle or a second angle, but almost a, like a 3D angle. And we can turn it and see what the effect of, if we priced it this way, what would it have on deposits? And what about our payment streams from ACH, treasury management, and all these other functions, and really get a comprehensive income and expense model so we can figure out how to price this to our concept. Uh, and then the, really the, the third thing is understanding how every state is different. And since every state cannabis program is different, every state banking uh, set of regulations are different. And Green Check's done a great job of having their programmers and having their legal teams understand each state. So when we go to Mississippi, those laws concerning Mississippi transactions, we can verify that's a Mississippi state transaction and we know it's good. If we took a dollar, say, in another state, say New Mexico, and we did business there, we know based on New Mexico laws that this is a good transaction and this one's not. And, and having that resource behind us, it just it just allowed us to move much faster than our competitors. 
Now, there's so much to unpack there, but I think one thing I really want to highlight is, you know, the, the way that you brought all the different folks together from different departments and got that buy-in at every level from every group. I think that's so crucial. We've seen so many times a company will say, we're going to implement a new program. You know, the senior leadership gets really excited behind it. They roll it out. And the people who end up having to execute that platform never get any opportunity to say, here are my concerns or here's what I'm excited by. And what typically happens is that those initiatives fall flat because there's not that kind of go get it attitude um, among the part of the entire team. So I think the fact that you kind of started there is is really worth highlighting as a, as a best practice for anybody listening. Um, I also wanna just talk a little bit more about the um, the decision to go with Green Check. Obviously, you, know, you were looking for a specific need, but we have a lot of FinTech innovators who listen to this show and uh, virtually all of them are always wondering, what can I do to make myself more attractive to a bank and, and make sure that I'm kind of top of the pile when they are looking for those service providers? What advice do you have for fintechs looking to make themselves attractive to banks like yours? Well, I think the first thing that Green Check did from my point of view is they did their homework. They understand that the U.S. banking is one of the most highly regulated industries in the world. They understood the nuances of the regulatory the legal challenges and our operational challenges. They knew the questions that our regulators may might ask or probably would ask. They knew the questions that internal audit team would ask. So instead of just saying here, here, here's a way of making a shiny uh, a buck or two, they came in with an approach that we understand where this is going to go, and you're going to have a, a zillion questions. And we have this great risk model, and this risk model really requires you to bring everybody in your bank together, so everyone's on the same page. And by by doing your homework and, and really presenting it that way, that's their I think the, the big advantage they had. Yeah. Yeah. Being prepared is obviously a really crucial piece. And we see so many companies struggle when they're sending the same marketing email to every company, you know, really not ignoring the differences that make each financial institution unique. Um, so I think that's that's a really good piece to highlight as well. Um, so I guess the, the question that comes up next is what have the results been like? I mean, obviously, you've been at it for still a relatively short amount of time in the grand scheme of things. But what are you seeing as far as uh, how the program is working so far? Well, you know, we really like our program where it's at. We're, we're in a state that has a low population and has a relatively low disposable income per person. Um, we also have challenges and we competitors in the hemp market. We have competitors in the illicit uh, cannabis industry. They're all kind of vying for the same dollars. But at the end of the day, we're making money here. And we're, we have a, a great program. We're starting to launch into other states. We're starting to look at other services to provide that's auxiliary to just cannabis deposit business like cannabis lending. Uh, it, not only has it helped us make a few extra dollars, but it's really brought us together in, in helping us understand our branding concept, you know, how, how to bring bank services just beyond our branch network. And that's what digital banking is about. Uh, not everyone can pull that off successfully, and there's a ton of companies who can or can't help you do that correctly. But it's helped us to, as a team to put that together, understand how that process works, understand that all the nuances is, so we can go to other states with this digital banking process. And the last thing I really like is helped us with is very similar to what I just mentioned of uh, bringing teams together. It's helped us bring solve a problem. Uh, and to, by bringing a new product, a new service to a new market, because that's what Canvas Banking is about at the end of the day. It's a new product, a new service to to Mississippi market. So how does it? How can we do that? How can we replicate that process so we can do it better and faster than our competitors down the street? And since we have done this with Cannabis Banking already, it just made us a little more nimble than our competitors and a little bit faster. And we like that a lot. No, that's great. That's such a good way to think about it, too. I mean, obviously, there's this one specific instance where you've got a specific challenge, a specific opportunity. But to your point, being ready for that gives you that flexibility. So when something else pops up, either a new opportunity or a new potential road bump somewhere, you've got that flexibility to be able to deal with it. And you've put yourself in a really strong position, not just for this opportunity, but for the next one as well. So um, we are almost out of time. Uh, I've got one one question left for you. And, and obviously, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty around uh, what's going 
going to happen with the legalization of cannabis in the United States and at the state level. Nobody has a crystal ball. But what's your guess about what happens to cannabis banking from here over the next couple of years? Well, we think it's going to grow nationwide if it becomes legal. If it's you can buy it in any state, you can transport uh, transport across state lines. That's still going to be good for banking. Uh, the reason why is that in the United States, uh, most of the cannabis that is grown, sold, and used in the United States is illegal. There still needs to be uh, a team and a company and people who can verify that those who are doing it the right way, the legal way, that their money is verified in state legal or federally legal. There's always going to be a need for us. So we're not going to go away. There will probably be some more players in our market, and there will be enough business for everybody as long as you do a great job at what you do, just like anything else. If it's rescheduled or to say from a Schedule One drug to a Schedule Three drug that's currently proposed, I think some of our cannabis-related businesses will one day miss the easy days where there were very little regulation. Today, we really have two pages of regulations uh, through FinCEN of how to do cannabis banking. I would bet a Schedule Three drug uh, in there's some agency out there with binders of regulations of how a Schedule Three drug should be done. And it'll be a little more complex and a little more difficult. And I'm afraid it may weed out some of the smaller players in the cannabis industry as, as they're just fighting for efficiency. Um, but that's going to happen anyway. And, and we'll, we will roll with that with the changes also. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Uh, I think, you know, again, you've put yourself in a really strong position. And um, I think there's a lot to take away for both uh, folks uh, who are listening from the bank side or from the fintech side. Jeff, I want to thank you so much for sharing your thoughts, your experiences with us. Um, it's a topic that's on a lot of people's minds, but you're out there actually engaging with it in a very concrete way, which is excellent. So I hope all of our listeners have had a, a at least a couple things to think about as they've listened to this. Um, and again, as the COO of Merchants and Marine Bank, um, Jeff, thanks again for taking the time. Greg, thanks for having me. Have a great day. The Finnovate podcast is produced by Informa Connect in association with Provoke.fm Media. Check out Finnovate.com for information on Finnovate's upcoming shows and to learn how you can get involved. The discount code Finnovate Podcast will save you 20% on tickets to all of our events. And you can email us at info at for information on sponsoring, speaking, or demoing. Thanks for listening. <laughs>